So let's talk about pulley system. Uh, I have a question which is saying the coefficient of kinetic friction between the table top and the 1 kg mass on top of it is 0 0.30. If the pulley is taken to be massless and frictionless and the connecting rope massless, use energy method to calculate the speed of the hanging 6 kg block after it has descended 0 0.8 meters from its starting point at rest. Okay, so we can use Newton's laws of motion to find the velocity that is direct, but the question is telling us that use energy method. So we use energy method from work, energy, and power to find the velocity. But the best thing here to do is I'm going to teach you both methods. Okay, so the first thing is. You need to find the acceleration. I'm going to use the normal way on how to solve this question. Then the second one, I'm going now to use energy method to calculate the. I'm going to use the energy method now to calculate the what? The velocity. Okay. So first, let's use Newton's laws of motion. <clears throat> Under Newton's laws of motion, what we should know is here there is friction. If there is no friction at all. The formula which we use to find the acceleration is the summation of all the forces. The force that makes the whole system to descend is the weight of this guy. Allow me to call this one as M, M2, M1, this one to be M2. So the, the weight of M1 is the one that makes the whole system to move in this direction. Okay, so this is M1G. Therefore, we'll say that the summation of the forces we have the force that makes the whole system to move is the weight force, which is M1G. Okay. Now, when we do that, the next thing we have to do is I'm going to say when this system is now moving, both M1 and M2 they are moving. Therefore, according to Newton's second law, we replace this with mass times acceleration. But in this case, we have got two masses, so I need to add. I'll say M1. M2 like that times A is equal to M1G. My goal is to find the acceleration. I'll divide both sides by M1 plus M2. M1 plus M2. So these two cancel. Acceleration will be equal to M1G divided by M1 M2. This is the formula which you can use to find the acceleration of the pulley system, this type of pulley system, if there is no friction at all. Okay. Now, in a case where there is friction, let's see what's going to happen. In a case where there is friction, let's see what's going to happen. We'll say the summation of all the forces the force that makes the whole system to go in this direction, it is the weight of this M1. But this M1 has to overcome the friction force here for it to start moving. So I'll say it is weight 1 minus the friction force. According to Newton's second row, this is going to be replaced by mass times acceleration. We'll say M1 plus M2 times A. The weight force is M1G minus the friction force. Now, I know that friction force is given by mu times the normal force. In this case, which normal force are we talking about? The only block which is in contact with the table is M2. So I'll say the normal force here will be what? The normal force in this case will be equal to M2G. So I'll say friction force will be equal to mu times M2G, like that. So I can say M1 plus M2, everything in the brackets, I'll have M1G minus the friction force, it will be replaced by mu M1 or M2G. Divide both sides by M1 plus M2, even here M1 plus M2, like that. Now, these two can be cancelled. My acceleration can be given by M1G minus mu M2G. I divide this by M1 plus M2, like that. 
Now I can plug in the values to find the acceleration. I'll go ahead and say let's let's plug in the values. I have a to be equal to my m1 is 6 times 9.8 minus my mu is 0 0.3 times I will just get rid of this times m2 is 1 times g is 9.8 divide this by m1 is 6 plus 1 like that let's create space here so we we'll have 6 point um, 6 times 9.8 which is 58.8 I'll put it here okay so I'll say acceleration is equal to 58.8 minus 0 0.3 times 1 times 9.8 which is 2.94 I divide this by 6 plus 1 is 7 like that my acceleration will be equal to 58.8 minus 2.94 I'm getting 50 55.86 divide it by 7 Therefore, my acceleration will be 55.86 divided by 7. The answer is 7.98 meters per second squared. That is my acceleration. After finding the acceleration, we have been told that the system has descended 0 0.8 meters. Okay? 0 0.8 meters so if the system has descended 0 0.8 meters then we know that it started from rest I don't have time I can use the third equation under uh, under linear motion V final squared will be equal to V initial squared plus 2AD V final squared will be equal to V initial is 0 plus 2 my acceleration is 7.98 then my D is 0 0.8 like that V final squared will be equal to 2 times 7.98 times 0 0.8. So I'm getting 12.768 like that. You get the square root both sides. So V final will be equal to the square root of this is 3.57 meters per second. So this is the acceleration they want us to find, but they want us to use energy method. Okay? So we are saying that the final velocity is 3.57 meters per second. This is the acceleration they want us to find. Now sometimes they can also you can also be asked to find the tension. In this case, since we have got the friction here, let's call this one as T2 since this was M2. Then this was M1. Let's call this one as T1. So to find the tension force in this case, you can either use M1 or M2. You say here there is M1 G. So you can, if you use M1, you say the summation of forces in y direction. You have T1 pointing upward will carry positive. M1 G will carry negative because it's pointing downward. But in this case, the system was descending. If you're using M1, you get acceleration as negative. So it's going to be negative M1A is equal to T1 minus like that. So you shift this to the other side. So it's going to be negative M1A is plus. That is if you want to find there. I'm, I'm just, I just want to explain everything on the, the body system. Plus m 1g should be equal to t1 this can be written as t1 to be equal to m1g minus m1a now go ahead and plug in the values here use this formula and the formula i'm going to drive using m2 you 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 end up having the same answer okay like that use this one find the answer again you can you just choose if you want to find the tension t2 and t1 are going to be the same because they are connected to the same loop so if i want to use t2 
in this case I'll say the summation of forces in X direction T2 is pointing to the positive side minus the friction force so this will be replaced by now this one it was just moving toward positive x axis so the acceleration will be positive in this case but when plugging in uh, when driving the formula I, I have already included the negative so when you are plugging in the values here plug in acceleration as positive because when I was driving the formula I considered the acceleration to be negative so this will be replaced by m2a to be equal to t2 minus this shift this to the other side it will be t Okay, it will be M2A plus the friction force is equal to T2. You can either find the friction force separately. You know that it's mu times the normal force. The normal force is for M2G and plug in the values. The answer you're going to find here and the answer you're going to find there is going to be the same because you, we are talking about the same rope. Okay, that was just by the way in a case where you have been asked to find the tension force. Now, let's use energy method to find the velocity. Remember, our velocity is 3.57 meters per second. But the question was, use energy method to find the velocity. In this system, there is friction. So this is non-conservation of energy. When we're talking about non-conservation conservation of energy, we, we use this formula. Initial mechanical energy is equal to final mechanical energy. That is conservation of energy. But if there is friction, we call it non-conservative forces. Non-conservative forces, you use what we call the mechanical energy initial should be equal to the mechanical energy final plus the work done by friction force. So this formula is for non-conservation of energy. Then, let's come up with a free body diagram. This has descended 0 0.2. It has descended 0 0.8 so from this point to that point we are going to say that is our 0 0.2 0 0.8 meters the v, the v initial here the v initial here is zero we have been told that it's from rest we want to find the vinyl velocity so now what we need to understand that the mechanical energy initial initially before this system start moving we only the only block which has ability to fall is the six kg only. This one cannot fall. The only that's why here we have been asked to say calculate the speed of the hanging six kg because it's the only block which has got ability to fall. So I'll say the potential energy for the six kg block should be equal to now when they start now moving both M1 and M2. So let me call this one as M1, like we said. This one to be M2. Both M1 and M2, they will be moving. Therefore, I'll have the kinetic energy. This kinetic energy will be for both M1 and M2. Okay? And they'll have the same velocity because they, they are connected to the same rope. We said they're they are, they are having the same acceleration because they are connected to the same rope. Then I'm going to say plus the work done by friction force is work done by friction force is the friction force times the, the distance. So I'll say this times this. Okay. The next thing I'm going to do is potential energy is mass. Now which mass is M1? GH to be equal to kinetic energy. Now since this is connected to the velocity, this object was moving. M1 was moving. M2 was moving. I need to add the masses. M1 plus M2. Then V squared plus the friction force is given by mu times the normal force. In this case, we're talking about the only block which had, which was in contact with the surface or the table is M2. So I'll say the normal force is that. So I'll replace this mu M2g times d. Our goal is to find the velocity. I can get rid of the half. I just do times 2 to get rid of the fraction. So I'm going to have 2 mgh like that is equal to m1 plus m2 v squared. 2 times this I'll have 2 mu m2gd like that. I can shift this to the left hand side. So I'll have 2 m1gh minus 2 mu m2g 
d to be equal to m1 plus m2 then v squared i can divide both side by m1 plus m2 even here i can divide both side by m1 m2 these two cancel so i'm going to remain with v squared to be equal to here on top i can factor out two now the d we are talking about here the d which we are talking about here this d is the same as the h so i can say this is the same as h so i'm going to factor out that so h we are talking about and d is the same in this case so we're going to have two i'm going to factor out two g and h okay then i'll say open brackets here i'm going to remain with what oh okay to make things simple let me not factor out anything let's just put the way it is two m1 gh minus two mu m2 g let's put just as d m1 in that case is what or oh, let me just put m1 plus m2 like that let's plug in the values before we get the square root i'll start from here so we plug in the values what are we going to have v squared will be equal to 2 times m1 is 6 g is 9.8 then h is 0 0.8 like that i need to do minus again here 2 times the mu value is 0 0.3 then m2 is 1 then g is 9.8 i don't have space i'll shift this one a bit to come here okay oh, let me just say times again i have got what d is 0 0.8 i divide everything by m1 is 6 plus 1 like that so my v squared will be equal to i'll have 2 2 times 6 okay then times 9.8 times 0 0.8 I'm getting 94 94.08 let me just write for here like this 94.08 minus then that one I'm going to say 2 times 0 0.3 then times 1 times 9.8 times 0 0.8 so here I'm getting 4.704 4. I divide this 6 plus 6 is 7 like that okay now what is what is 94.08 minus 4.704 4. 94.08 94 minus 4.704 4, like that I'm getting so my v squared will be equal to i'm getting 89.376 let's divide this by 7 so if i divide this by 7 i'll be able to get my v squared to be equal to 12.768 now let's get the square root both sides if i get the square root here the square root there i'll have my v my v will be equal to 3.57 3.57 meters per second as you can see the answer which we have here and the answer which we have there is the same okay but in this case they specify to say use energy method so you use the method which you have just used here but if the question was calculate the speed if they didn't specify the method you're supposed to use you can either use energy method or newton's laws of motion to find the speed so this is how you find the speed using energy method